Amen. Our message title today, and thank you, Christina, for reading the scripture, is God is faithful. And if you had a chance to see your bulletin, the front of your bulletin has a photo that I took of the sun rising over the mountains of Nevada, um, which in, is indeed, I know for many of us, the sun rising every day is a reminder of God's faithfulness. Amen. I begin today's sermon with an understatement. 2020 has not been an ordinary year. And so therefore, Advent 2020 should not be an ordinary Advent. Awaiting the coming of Christ should take on a different, deeper meaning this year. The waiting should be different. Perhaps there should be a greater longing for Jesus this year. And not just any Jesus, not just baby Jesus, meek and mild Jesus, but the Jesus whose birth and second coming we are awaiting this year of 2020 should be more clearly the Jesus who is so clearly in the scriptures for love and for justice. A savior, the sovereign and a shepherd as Pastor Sarah told us last week. One who stands, speaks and acts for the marginalized, the left out, the left behind, the poor and the lame, the blind and the oppressed. This Advent 2020 should cause us to see a different Jesus. We should not only see the baby in the manger. This Advent, we should see the baby and the manger. This Advent, 2020 should be different for us, church. With all that has happened, we should be entering this season with a greater yearning for a Christ who was sent by God to set the captives free. And this should indeed inspire hope within all of us that the one who is to come and the one who we celebrate this season, the one whom God sent is Jesus the Christ who came to free us all with healing, as the prophet Micah says, in his wings. And as we wait, while we wait, we might also have a greater yearning to be the church that Christ has called us to be. In our text today, the Apostle Paul is addressing the church at Corinth, and this is a lectionary text chosen for this Sunday, this first Sunday of Advent. And he's speaking, and he's writing this letter to the church at Corinth in their season of waiting guiding them on how to be the church that Christ has called them to be. Was it the season of Advent in the text? Well, in early Christianity, Advent was somewhat perpetual. People believed Jesus was coming back soon, real soon. There were eyewitnesses who saw Jesus ascend, who expected to see Jesus return in their lifetime. So the expectation was that Jesus was going to return. And we hear this in some of our lyrics of songs, soon and very soon, or, or Jesus is coming back soon. And we had better be ready. That was the sentiment of the early Christian communities. Just oppose this sense of expectation of a coming Christ with the reality of the strife and injustice in the city and in the church. You see, the church at Corinth was believed to be a church comprised of both Jews and Gentiles. The location of the church in the city of Corinth is in the midst of the hustle and bustle of a big complex city with a diversity of people and the challenges of a major trade city. The Apostle Paul writes this letter in response to a letter written to him by people in the church describing the problems in the church, problems such as religious confusion, 
disagreements, jealousy, factions, privilege, cultural differences among the believers, rivalry, immoral behavior, and even lawsuits in the church. The church at Corinth, in its season of waiting for the coming Christ, is living a reality of strife and confusion with the need for healing and for justice in the church. And they write to their founder, the Apostle Paul, a letter which likely read like this, help. In, it, in this context, Paul writes this letter called 1 Corinthians and gives a word for an anxious church in trying times during their season of waiting for the coming Christ. And that I believe might capture, this might capture most of the churches, if not all of the churches on this first Sunday of Advent in this year of our Lord 2020. Anxious churches in trying times. Paul's overarching message, God is faithful. God is faithful and will give you, I heard Pastor Sarah say it in our prayer, God will give you what you need while you wait. In just the salutation of the letter, which is what Christina read for us, Paul tells us how God prepares the church to wait with hope in trying times. First, Paul says in his salutation, grace and peace to you from God and from the Lord Jesus Christ. In times of turmoil, in times of conflict, in times of confusion, in times of waiting, God is faithful and can grant us all peace and grace. Now you might just think that is a salutation that Paul uses, but remember the apostle Paul is saying this. Paul, who used to be an instrument of persecution, is now using his voice to say that God can bring grace and peace to the very people Paul used to persecute. God is indeed faithful. The good news today, because someone needs to experience the grace of God and the peace of God, the Apostle Paul is consistent in his messaging. For in his letter to, to the Philippians in chapter 4, verse 7, he says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And for our church who just spent time on teaching about prayer, my prayer is that you are praying and presenting your requests to God and experiencing the peace of God. And it's never too late to start. Paul says God is faithful. And will grant us not only the peace of God, but also the grace of God. There's a song that my old church used to sing, and it says something about God's grace. Grace is that goodness that you did not earn and you do not deserve. Someone needs to experience the grace of God because someone is struggling with all of the focus we've had on race and racism. With all of the focus on COVID-19 and social distancing, with all of the politics that have permeated our privacy, someone under the sound of my voice needs to experience the grace of God. And God is faithful. And Paul is consistent in his message again, for in his second letter to the Corinthians, Paul exclaims that God is able to make all grace abound towards you. I encourage you all to receive the grace of God. This is where it matters that you know that the author of the letter is Paul, the Apostle Paul. You see, once a persecutor of Christian, Paul knows something about God's grace. So he goes further in this simple salutation and he expounds on this grace. In verse four, Paul says, I give thanks to my God always for you because the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. Here's the explanation in verse five. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you 
so that you are not lacking any spiritual gift. Did he say gift? He said gift. Right after Black Friday, that word gift rings in our ears. There's something about gifts in this season that are important. But ah, let's listen to the gifts that Paul is talking about. First, Paul says that we have been enriched in our speech. Somebody say speech. Let's talk about speech. What we speak can either bless our neighbor or tear down our neighbor. Words we say can either bless our church or bring down our church. Words we say can either heal situations or hinder situations. And Paul names speech because given the report he received in the letter from the Corinthians, he can tell that they need to learn how God's grace can enrich their speech in the church. So I ask you today, how's your speech these days? What are you saying about the church? Paul is consistent in Colossians 4 and 6. He admonishes, let your speech always be graced, seasoned, as it were, with salt, so that you may know how to respond to each person. Paul says God is faithful and has graced you with the gift of enriched speech. Realize that your words have power and use the gift God has given you. And that is the gift of enriched speech to build up and not to tear down what God is doing, especially among your family and in the church. After speech, Paul gives us the next way God can enrich us, and that is by gracing us with knowledge. Somebody say knowledge. We are, High Park Union Church, an educated body of Christ. And as educated as we are, I believe we've recently discovered that we do not know all we need to know to fully address one of the greatest atrocities inflicted by humanity in the form of systemic racism. As educated as we are, we've discovered that there is a history that we do not fully know nor understand that there are things happening today that we do not fully understand. Our very faith continues to hold mysteries that we do not understand. But Paul tells the body of Christ, and I tell you that God is faithful and will enrich us with the knowledge we need to do the work that God has called us to do. While we await thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, God is faithful. That's good news, church, that there are things we don't know, but we're connected to the one who does know. That there are things we don't know how to fix, but we're connected to the one who can fix. My, my childhood pastor, Reverend Bronson, used to say that God is a heart fixer and a mind regulator. And for those of us who are lovers of knowledge, and I venture to say that's all of us, you need to see this text for yourself. Paul says that God's grace through Jesus Christ comes in the form of not only enriched speech, but also of knowledge, Paul says, of every kind. So what do you need to know to understand what's happening today? The grace of God can give you knowledge. What do we need to know to help us move forward as a church? The grace of God can give us that knowledge. What do you need for your own life to move forward? The grace of God can give you knowledge. The scripture says of every kind. As a lover of knowledge, as one who is seeking knowledge for how to co-pastor this great flock, for one who is seeking knowledge for how to help my mom in the midst of dementia. For one who is seeking knowledge for how to be faithful in all of my roles. The one who seeks to do what God has called me to do. This one makes me want to go and tell it on the mountains. 
that God's grace will give you the knowledge, the scripture says, of every kind. So search your mind and figure out what you don't know and begin to ask God to give you what you need to know. God will give us knowledge of every kind while we wait for the coming of Christ. The third way, and I'm almost done, that God is faithful and gives us grace is through the strengthening of our testimony. That's what Paul says in verse six, after he says God gives us grace through enriched speech and knowledge of every kind. I just love that. He then says, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you. And I'm looking at about 33 households that I believe have had the testimony strengthened within you. This season of Advent, this particular season of Advent 2020, some of us find ourselves with a testimony this morning that has been strengthened in us. Some of us have been through hardship this year that we never imagined this time last year as we waited in Advent 2019 with great anticipation. We had no idea that 2020 would test us and try us and challenge us. But do I have a witness that God is faithful? We had no idea that 2020 would draw us away from our sanctuary, but near to God. But do I have a witness that God is faithful? We had no idea that 2020 would compel us to seriously address systemic racism. But do I have a witness that God is faithful? We had no idea that we'd lose loved ones and almost 250,000 people in this country to COVID-19. But do I have a witness that God is indeed faithful? We had no idea that some of us would carry the virus and survive it, but do I have a witness that God is indeed faithful? Paul told the people at Corinth in their days of tests and trials that their testimony of Christ had been strengthened among them. And I'm asking you to help me preach the end of the sermon. If your testimony has been strengthened in 2020, type amen in the chat room. If your testimony has been strengthened, you come through something you never thought you'd deal with, type a man in the chat room. If you now have a new understanding of Jesus Christ, type a man in the chat room. If you've come through a test and now you have a testimony, why don't you type a man in the chat room? Paul said to the church at Corinth, and I say to the church at Hyde Park Union Church, in this season of Advent 2020, that God is faithful. God can give us peace that surpasses understanding. That means peace you shouldn't have considering all that's going on. God gives us the gift of grace through enriched speech. And with knowledge of every kind, teaches us what we need to know to do the work we need to do. And with the testimony of Christ while we wait for Jesus' return. In other words, in this season of waiting, with all of his trials and challenges, we are growing spiritually individually and as a body of Christ. And to borrow from 1 John 3, it does not yet appear who we shall be. Now listen to the closing of his salutation. Paul says, God will also strengthen you to the end so that you might be blameless. Somebody say blameless. On the day of our Lord, when he comes back again, God is faithful. That's what Paul says. By him, you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. God is indeed faithful and will give us what we need while we wait. Let's begin this season of Advent with hope, knowing that God is indeed faithful. Amen.